For chapter 11, just so that you guys know what we're looking at, is we're going to look at data analysis and statistics a little bit. Okay, a little bit of data analysis and whatnot. At this time right now, in, I think, New York, there's a lot of data being crunched, not like in the stock market like you think, although, yes, there is some there. But one of the things that I like, and I don't know if you guys know, but I like sports. What's tonight? Does anybody know? The NFL draft starts tonight, okay, where 32 teams will pick their first overall pick of the 2018 draft tonight. Behind the scenes, there are people that do everything that we're, or some of the things that we're going to do, uh, where they analyze everything about that player from everything from what they did in high school till now. I just saw a report this morning on ESPN that one of the possible first round pick quarterbacks is apologizing to somebody on a tweet that he wrote in high school because it's that they look at everything you've done, okay? So just so that you guys know that, a lot of times employers do look at that thing or do look at your social media stuff. So be careful. That's a side note. But behind the scenes, people look at all that data. A lot of data is distributed what they call normally. All right? And what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the normal distribution curve. What a normal distribution curve is, and I can't draw it very well. I'm going to do my best, but it's, it looks something like this. It looks like a hill. It's also referred to as the bell curve. Have any of you guys ever heard of those terms before? Bell curve or a normal distribution curve? Which one? Bell? Okay. The bell curve or normal distribution curve is what it's commonly referred to. What this is, is a way of displaying data. Okay? Now, right down the middle of this data is going to be your mean. Now, your book has chosen to use the Greek letter mu for mean. In some cases, they also use x bar for mean. Right now, in one of my other classes, they are doing an NFL draft type project for me, where they're analyzing and picking who should be the number one pick in that position, based on just the numbers from the combine alone. On the calculator, when you run all the statistics on it, this up here, x bar, means mean. That's why I wrote it on there. Your book is going to use mu for this. It looks like a u with a little bit extra tail in the front, OK? Just so you know. Now. What they are going to do next is they are going to go one standard deviation away on both sides of the mean. The standard deviation symbol looks like this. It would be plus, and it looks like an O, kind of with an extra tail on the top. Or you could be one standard deviation to the left of the mean, which would be subtracting. It's kind of like this, you guys. Gabby, pick a number. Four. Four. Okay, if I had four in the middle on a number line, if I was one away, that'd be five and this would be three. Does that make sense? That's what they mean by that. That's all that it means, just in symbols. Now, between these two parts that we have up here, between these two categories, that represents 68% of all the data. So yesterday, you guys took a test in here for me. Correct? Mm -hmm. With your test, okay, if I were to find the average of all of your test scores and put them together, 68% of you would be within one standard deviation to the left or to the right of the mean. So almost 70% of all people are within one standard deviation, or 68% is within all within those two. Now, the next thing I want to point out to you guys is this part. If it's 68 for to the left and to the right, and I got a line running down the middle, how much is on each side? 34. 34%. How do you write percents as decimals? Yeah. So this part right here, this zone represents 0.34 and 0.34%. Oh, not 0.34%, excuse me. 34% or 0.34. Now, Here's what that says to you. If the mean was here and the standard deviation, if I go one above it, 
I'm saying that the probability of me hitting somebody in this area is 34%. That's what it's stating. Or if I go one less than the mean, it's the probability of having 34% of the people are going to hit in that spot. Okay? Then, the next line over. I'm going to put it in red. This would be two standard deviations away. And according to that, what's going to happen for you is it's going to be where you have 95% of all people are going to be within two standard deviations away. Is that pretty good? Is 95% pretty good? Yes. Yeah. Typically speaking, whenever you see statistics done on anything, like in the paper, online, new magazines, whatever, a lot of times they have that in there where they have a margin of error type thing where it says plus or minus 2.5%. But usually in order to print it, it's going to have to be close to 95% accurate before they can actually say it. Okay? So it's usually within that, that range. What's 95 minus 68? 27. Uh, Jordan, what's half of 27? 13.5. Very good. Which means this. I'm 13.5% on this side, and I'm 13.5% on that side. But, Trent, what's 13.5% as a decimal? 0.135. Nice job. 0.135. Okay. Now I'm going to go another standard deviation away. Oops, that's not supposed to be a plus on that side. Hold on, you guys. I messed up that. That's supposed to be a minus there and a minus there. My fault. For this particular part now, when we're three standard deviations away, we are picking up 99.7% of it. Is that pretty accurate? Is that pretty good? 99.5%. Now, for each side, just so that you guys know, each side would be 2.35%. What is... 2.35% as a decimal. Thank you. What's 2.35 as a decimal? 0 0.00235. Good. 0 0.0235. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Here's the one thing I always miss when I'm doing mine. I forget the point, I forget the zero in there. Is that going to make a difference if you miss a zero? Yeah. So be careful with that. That's point zero two three five. Then the rest of it is everything above three standard deviations. A lot of times they say that that's in the fourth or four above it. Okay, but realistically, it's everything else. That represents the rest of it, or 0.15%, which is 0 0.0015 in decimal form. 0 0.0015 is the last piece. Okay. Now, some of the things that are also in this, this normal distribution curve. Have any of you ever done an IQ test? Either online or on the paper form or whatever. And have you ever looked at the results or see where you're at? Okay, because that right there is exactly how they tell you what you're in. Okay, people that are in this zone up here, in this very far right zone, okay, those are people like Einstein, Hawking, those types of people that are geniuses or quote unquote geniuses. They're so far up there that they think on different levels than we do. Okay. So for that particular case, every set of data is going to be displayed by this. 
this up there on the screen right now is all your answers for this section. Your answers are there. You just have to know how to answer them. Okay? But your problems or your answers are right there. And really what you have to do today is either add or subtract. That's really the only mathematical function or operation you're doing today is adding and subtracting. I promise. So here's what they're going to ask you to do. On the first few sets, it's going to ask you to do something like this. Find the probability of a number being from negative two standard deviations away from the mean. So what this is asking you is it's asking you for what's the probability of you hitting it from left of the mean two spots to the mean. So if you need to draw a picture, bless you, and some of the ones will have pictures already for you, just so you know this. So here's my standard bell curve. The mean is right here. That's the middle. Which way would be minus 2, to the left or to the right? Negative would be left, like you're going down, OK? It wants you to tell me what is the area under the curve for these two parts. That's what it's referring to. From left to standard deviations up to the mean. So the numbers from the chart that I just gave you, this one was 0.34 was the first one, and this was 0.135. What do you do with those two numbers? Add them. Good job. What's 0.135 plus 0.34? Adding them. You just told me to add them. Point four seven five. Which means, if I were to say this to you guys, if I were to say, you know what, I ran the test, I, I graded your test, I ran the numbers, here's the mean, this is two standard deviations away, 47.5% of you, which is almost half of you, would be a little bit less than the average. That's what that's telling me. Okay? Let me give you another one. Find the probability that the number will be less than or equal to two standard deviations. Now, which way does this go when it says plus? Good. So even though you don't necessarily have to draw a picture, I always do. I'm more visual that way. Okay. If the middle is the mean, which way would be two standard deviations to the positive? Jalen already said it went to the right. Two lines. One, two. Now, Haley... Which way is less than? Which way is less than? To the left. Right. So here's what it wants you guys to do. It's trying to ask you for what's the probability of a number falling in this zone right here. Is that a lot of zones? Yeah. Because you think about it, this is the middle right here. That's the middle, and that's everything over this way. Okay, now let me explain something to you guys. We could add all those four numbers over there, but what number is it going to equal? 0.34. Okay, pause for a second. If this is 0.34, which way is the middle line? Negative two standard deviations away. Point five. Okay? So what this all represents from the middle over is 0.5 of the data. Or add all those four pieces together. Guess what number you get? 0.5 or 
Then you have a 0.34 for one standard deviation away. And you got a 0.135 for two standard deviations away, what do you do with those three numbers? Subtract them. Add them. You're finding the total between all those. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to add them. You're going to add all these up because those are all the shaded regions that you're trying to find. Because it said less than two standard deviations away. So less than, like if I were to put the line right on here, Jordan, which way is less than? So it's everything left of that. Since it didn't tell you when to stop, when it says less than it, it's everything left of it. So what's 0.5 plus 0.34 plus 0 0.135? 0 0.975. 0 or 97.5% of the data would be in that zone. What I'm doing is I'm just adding. That's really all I'm doing, OK? Then, where it gets a little bit trickier is now they're going to give you some numbers. They're still the same process. Everything about it's the same. It's a, excuse me, they're going to put it in terms of an actual problem, OK? So here's what it's going to say. Scores for the state peace officers' standards and training tests are normally distributed, which means the bell curve, with a mean of 55. So knowing that I'm more visual, I'm going to draw this bell curve. That's probably one of the better ones I've had. With 55 right down the middle. And a standard deviation of 12, which means this. If I go one standard deviation up, what's 55 plus 12? 67, good. What's two standard deviations up? So what's 67 plus 12? 79. What's three standard deviations up, or 79 plus 12? 91. And then everything above 91 is what's left over in that category. Then if I go left of it, what's one less than 55? Or... 55 minus 12. 43, good. What's 2 less? What's 43 minus 12? What's 3 less? 31 minus 12? Oh, I didn't realize we were already on 31. I'll just start behind you guys. 19. And then everything less than 19. Okay? So even though it's not the same symbols that we had just a little bit ago, it's the same problem. All those numbers still apply. Those 0.34s and the 0.135s and the 0.0235 and the 0.0015, they all exist here. It's just with numbers now. And here's what it's going to ask you to do. About what percent of the people taking the test have scores between 43 and 67? Where's 43 at? One to the left. Where's 67 at? One to the right. When it says between them, it's asking for how much percent would this be right here? 68%. That would be 68% because it's 0 0.34 uh, plus 0.34, which is 0.68 or 68%. What do you think? 0 0.34 plus 0.34. Because each one... Each of these, Trent, like on the initial one that I gave you, was 0.34. Okay? Then the next question says, an agency in the state will only hire applicants with test scores of 67 or higher, which makes sense, right? If you're dealing with peace officers, you know, policemen and highway patrol and all that stuff, don't you want the better ones? I'm hoping. So you want 67 or greater. Where's 67 at? So you want 67 or greater. So you want everything that I'm shading in blue, which again, this number was 0.135. This number was 0 0.0235. And this number was 0 0.0015. What do you do with those three numbers? 
Add them. Wait, why are you adding? It's not You're going with the blue. Wait, couldn't you just go 0. 0.5 minus 0. 0.34? Okay, uh, you got ahead of me, but yes. Okay. So if you want to add those three together, you should get what? 0.16. That's what you get when you add them. Now, Colton made a suggestion that I was going to say after we got that by adding, but he is right. And here's what the, he suggested. I'm going to put it in red so you can see it. If this right here, all the way over, is worth 50%, and this right here, all the way over, is what you need, couldn't you cut away this part in order to get the answer? So you could take 0.5 minus 0.34. Do you get the same as if you were to add those three pieces together? Yeah. You could. Either way, it's going to be the same answer. Okay. What do you think? Now, again, the numbers that I wrote on there in blue, those are the same ones from the first table. That first bell curve I gave you. They're not changing. Okay? Then, the next thing is, what if I gave you something like this and said, what are the amount of people that are like 65 or higher? Is 65 one of your standard deviations? No. No. Now we've got a problem. So what we do is, is that we use what we call a z-score. Okay? There's a formula for z-score. To find the z-score of a problem, you take the number that you're looking for, so in that case where I said 65, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Now, on page 598, so at least somebody in your group turn to page 598 so you guys can see it. Right at the top of page 598, do you see a table? Yes. Good. That table is going to help you answer questions. Okay? How that table is listed is it reads it from left to right. Okay? So that's what it does. So if I use that same problem, and if I said I wanted everybody that was less than 65, per, or 65 on the number, 65 was the number I was looking for, which was not on our thing, minus the mean, which was 55, divided by 12, which was the standard deviation. What's 65 minus 55? What's 10 divided by 12? As a decimal. 0.83 repeating. Or 0.8. Okay? Because you're going to round to the nearest tenth for this stuff, for this table anyway. Now, on the table, when you look at that table for that part there, as soon as you see 0.8, do you see down the left-hand side of the column where it says Z? And then it's got the numbers negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Since it was a positive number, we're going to go to positive 0. And you're going to scroll over on the table to 0.8. How much was it? What number comes out on the table? 0.7. In the table, you go down to where it says 0, or 0. Then you go over to where it says 0.8, and the number that spits out is 0.7881. Okay? So, on the table, go to 0 because it's positive, over to 0.8, and we have 0.7881. Oh, okay. You have to go to the positive one because our number that we got for our z score was positive. See, I thought you were going to like 0.81, and that's what I'm saying with the answer. Oh, no. Does that make sense how I did that now? Okay. What that means for you guys is this. On that bell curve that we had, 
65 was not part of it, wasn't it? Because you had 55 here, you had 67 here. 65 was like right here, right? Not one of the standard deviations. This number tells us everything right up to that part of it. So it would tell us all these people over here. It reads from left to right. So again, what that's telling you is everything from 0 all the way to 65 for the answers on the test would be 78.8% of all people. Okay? How would you find the other side? What if it was greater than 65? What would you have to do, do you think? If I were to say, if I were to lower the standards and say, I'll take everybody that's 65 or higher, how would you find them? Median be 65? Nope. Okay. If 65 is right here, this number that I have circled right here, the 7.7881, is everything from this side of it, but now I want the right side of it. Oh, so when you just subtract that number from one? Good. Or point? Good. Okay. If you want to get the left hand side of the number, or not left hand, right hand side of the number, you take one minus that. Is that what you're going to say, Jordan? Good. Okay. But that's how the chart reads. So one of the examples that they give is like this. They say a study finds that weights of infants at birth are normally distributed with a mean of 3,270 grams and a standard deviation of 600. So notice how they give those numbers to you. You don't have to go find them. An infant is randomly chosen. What's the probability that the infant weighs 4,170 grams or less? So now here's the problem. If I were to put the mean like this and put that standard deviation and the standard deviation over, if I were to add 600 and add 600, would 4,170 be on that curve? No. It's not one of those. That's why we needed to use the z-score. Okay? So 4,170 minus 3,270 divided by 600 was what? 1.5. 1.5. <clears throat> so now, in the table, you go down to the row that says positive 1, and you go over to point 0.5, and what number spits out? 0.9332. Okay? So what they're telling you is 93.3% of babies are weigh less than 4,170 grams. That's what they're telling you. Because again, here's where the 4,170 would be, right? In this category. And it said less than that. So it's finding all those parts over there, which is what the table tells you. What if it said greater than 4,170? What would you do with that 0.9332? What if I change it to say I want to know these people over here, the big ones? I take 1 minus 0.9332, the number that you got from the table. And that would give me the answer. Be careful with the wording. You will see things like at least, at most. Remember what that means? What does at least mean? At least means that's the smallest it could be or higher. What's at most mean? The highest it could be or lower. Okay, so be careful with that. All right? What do you guys think? Now, again, realistically, you're going to be doing adding and subtracting. Okay, maybe a couple division with the z-score, but that's about it. So on page 600, we got 3 through 19. 